In this video, we are going to explain the installation of the Suto iTech S461 ultrasonic clamp-on flow meter for liquids. You should have the following components on hand. S461 flow or energy meter. One transducer pair. Coupling agent or coupling pads. Mounting plate. One pair of metal stretchers. M12 connectors or cables. The energy meter should additionally have one pair of temperature sensors, another pair of metal stretchers. For the proper installation, please find a position with sufficient straight inlet and outlet. There is a table in the instruction manual describing the various scenarios. Please consider this for good measurement results. It's also important that the pipe must be filled completely with water or liquid. There are several connectors at the bottom side of the main unit used for power supply, signal interface, and sensor connection. Connect the two transducers and 24 volt DC supply to the flow meter. First, connect the transducers. Connect the upstream. Connect the downstream. Then connect the 24 volt DC supply to the VB Modbus. The flow meter powers up automatically. First, we perform settings through the mobile app S4C US. This app, which runs on Android and iOS, is used for all kinds of configurations, settings, and to check online values. It can be downloaded from the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store, or Suto iTech website. In order to protect the flow meter from unauthorized setting changes, there are two user roles defined. The standard user has to scan the QR code on the calibration cert or from the S461. The QR code is placed at the side of the instrument. After a successful scan, the settings can be done. The second role is the registered service partner. Please contact SUTO's service center to register for this role. You will receive a license key that has to be entered into the mobile app. Registered service partners do not need to scan the QR codes anymore. To communicate with the flow meter, the mobile phone has to establish a wireless connection first. Select under System the wireless sensor connection. Press the search icon. After a few seconds, all S461 flow meters nearby appear with their serial number. If the screen symbol on the left of the found device is in green, you can perform settings. If the color is yellow, you can only read settings but cannot change them. Please scan the QR code on the certificate. Please select the one you want to connect and perform the settings. Now we explain the required basic settings for the flow meter. Select in the settings menu, flow settings. Select the sensor type accordingly. UTS is the standard transducer. UTHS is the high temperature transducer. Under fluid type, select the fluid temperature to be entered. It requires only rough estimations as it has a slight effect on the transducer distance calculation. Select the pipe material. If the pipe material is not listed, select others and enter the sonic speed of the pipe material. In the instruction manual, you can find in the appendix a list of materials. Pipe outer diameter and wall thickness need to be entered. If a liner material exists, the thickness has to be entered. Otherwise, select no liner. Press save to write the configurations to the S461 main unit. It's recommended to select the proper physical units for consumption, flow, and velocity. If the device is an energy meter, there are also units available for temperature, energy flow, and energy. Press Save to write the configurations to the S461 main unit. This completes the basic settings, and we can move on to the installation menu. Now we move on to the installation dialog where some additional settings can be done and the installation status is shown. Please perform the following settings. Select the installation type. 
The V method is the standard method for pipe sizes below 200 millimeters. The Z method is used for bigger pipes. The installation mode is used to compensate the influence of impurity in pipe material. Mode 3 is used as default for all pipe sizes. Adjusting the installation mode is the last choice when other settings cannot meet the signal requirements. Practically, only Mode 3 and Mode 1 should be used. Do not consider other modes. Remember the transducer spacing, as this will later be needed. The transducer spacing is the distance between the two transducers when placing them on the pipe. Next is to install the transducers on the pipe. Air bubbles can influence the measurement. As they often appear at the top of the pipe, it's recommended to mount the transducers at the side. The pipe surface, where the transducers will be mounted, should be free from paint, dirt, or rust. It's highly recommended to clean the installation area. Apply coupling agent to the transducer and mount the first transducer on the pipe by using the metal stretcher. Be aware of the correct flow direction as indicated on the transducer. Align the transducers properly and firmly close the metal stretcher. Measure the transducer spacing L, which is shown in the app. Always measure from the front face of the transducer. Mark the position with a pen. Apply coupling agent to the second transducer and mount it on the pipe at the indicated spacing L. Do not yet close the metal stretcher too firmly, as we might need to fine adjust the position to get the best signal quality. After the complete installation of the transducers, an installation check should be performed to ensure that the crucial system parameters are within valid ranges, as indicated in the instruction manual. The installation status can be seen at the top bar in any menu, as well as the SQ value. If the parameters are not within the valid ranges, in most cases it is enough to slightly move the second transducer until the best signal quality is reached. After having the best signal quality, you can firmly close the metal stretcher. After closing the metal stretcher, please have a final look at the signal quality and make sure it is within the valid range. Please find further advice in the instruction manual. For energy meters, two additional temperature sensors are required. They have to be installed before and after the heat exchanger in order to measure the temperature difference. Use also the supplied metal stretchers to mount them on the pipe. It's recommended to use heat contact paste for a better temperature coupling to the surface. After successful installation of all sensors, we can check the online readings and the online screen of the mobile app as well as on the screen of the instrument. For a better low flow accuracy, you can perform a zero flow calibration. Before starting the zero flow setting, make sure that there is no flow in the pipe existing and follow the steps as indicated by the app. The calibration may take one minute to finish. After the calibration is done, please check the online value screen. The flow and velocity should now show zero. Now, the S461 is fully operational. You can connect the additional interface signals, Modbus, TCP, or analog output, if required. There are many more settings available through the mobile phone app. They are self-explanatory, and you can explore them anytime. Please also have a look at the instruction manual for further detailed information. Our service teams worldwide are happy to answer your questions as well. The S461 offers users a very simple installation without interrupting the process. Thanks to the wireless connection and the free S4C US app, it has never been easier to set up an ultrasonic clamp-on flow meter. The guided installation process ensures to get accurate and reliable readings within minutes. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned. Suto iTech. Be smart. Measure it.